here with uh, Simon from Hawk War Games at the Hawk War Games stand at the UK Games Expo 2014. Um, how's this expo been so far for you? Oh, it's been fantastic. We love coming here. You know, we came here last year um, and we really enjoyed it. It's such a great show and to be honest, it's going from strength to strength and we can't wait to see how big it goes next year. Anything new you've introduced at this show? Uh, well, this show we haven't got much. We do have one quite special item. And that is the 30 mil Ares. So, traditionally, for those of you that know, our range is a 10 mil um, sci-fi game. The 30 mil Ares is a collector's edition piece we've released, um, and essentially, it's taken one of our um, one of our models, a um, small 10 mil Walker, and we put it into 30 mil scale. So we had very, very limited selection. They were hand delivered by our uh, our manufacturing team on Friday night. So we had just enough, and they all went by <laughs> by like midday on the first day. So it's fantastic. But yes, yeah, so we've got to hit shelf to everyone, um, and they'll be on sale in a couple of weeks. So just in case people aren't aware, what is Drop Zone Commander? Okay, uh, Drop Zone is a 10 mil scale sci-fi war game. Um, it was released about two years ago. Uh, it's created by a guy called Dave Lewis. Um, it's got four factions at the moment, um, fifth coming out this year. It's very fast, furious, it's all about tactics. It's not just about line up your armies and kill each other. There's alternate activation, so you don't, um, so you don't like, lose the shot to go first and get your army shot off the table. It's, it's very dynamic, um, and it's just really, you know, it's a really nice feel. It's, um, it's a, it's a very tactical war game, and it, it gives you the feeling of fighting with a large army in amongst city streets and sweeping around corners and trying to eat, extract objectives from hot zones. Yeah, yeah, kind of cool. And last time I was, I came to see you at Salute, and you had a much bigger stand there. It was quite big, and mainly for one reason. One reason. Yeah, I, I was yeah. just about to say yeah. because of the um, you had an absolutely ridiculously large drop ship. <laughs> we did, we did. Well. Um, we, we were announcing a salute that we we're working with Andy Chambers um, of XGW fame to create a spaceship game. And it's coming out in the future. We have no sort of a confirmed release dates or anything like that yet. But to celebrate that we were working with him, we built a the smallest spaceship in the game. It'd be about two centimetres big, three centimetres big in gameplay size. And it was three metres long um, by about a metre wide. It was monstrous. And it was fantastic. It took like a month and a half, two months of work just to get it to that state, and it wasn't, it wasn't even finished. But it looked quite impressive on the day. I think everyone was around it taking photos, and it, it went down quite well. Yeah, I mean, I, I got up close, and I was quite surprised when you get up close. It was actually to scale, and there was yep. hundreds of tiny little um, drops, actually drop ships. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We had, had um, we, it, it carries a hundred Condor drop ships, um, which is a, a UCM, one of the factions in the game. Um, the Condor is their sort of staple dropship. It's a medium dropship. Uh, it can carry sort of three tanks, um, or some of the couple of APCs, or one command vehicle, or a couple of heavy tanks. So it's quite, it's quite, it's quite flexible. So we had a hundred of those, four bays, tw 25 in each bay, with hundreds of tanks. There's something like 300, 400 tanks on this thing. And all the, um, all the launch bays worked, so you could pull them out on, um, on their gantries. And then, of course, if it was a real, you know, working drop ship, they would then drop off and go into atmosphere. So basically, this the, the big drop ship, it essentially bridges the gap from your spaceborne invasion fleet to the ground. Your drop ships can't go into space. This thing carries them from that in-between step, from sort of um, space to high atmosphere. Then it launches them out and they fly to where they need to go. Okay, so does that mean that planetary action is kind of a... I think of the game, so that mean you're going to get this dropship and take over planets and space stations, that kind of thing? I can't say too much, but I reckon that would be a fairly, fairly accurate um, assessment, yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's not just going to be a line up your spaceships and shoot the crap out of each other, no, it's going to... We want to make sure that while you will be able to do Space Battle of Jutland, because everyone likes lining up the ships and firing the, you know, shooting the crap out of each other, that's good fun, but we want to have a more tactical element to the game, um, which is tough to do in a, in, a, in a spatial environment, but we wanted to really focus on the tactical element um, and make it not just about learning up ships and firing although that will there will be that option to play with rule wise so are you keeping the are you introducing all the same factions so that this game will have the same factions from the uh, drop zone commander game yes they will yes it will um, it will start with four um, the fifth faction we're releasing for drop zone in a couple of months uh, the resistance they're not likely to have or they won't have a fleet purely because that was all destroyed when the scourge invaded if you know the backstory um, so they are the only faction that won't have a fleet. You might see the occasional shuttle for them, or some sort of you know, in-game objective thing you're trying to protect. But it won't. They won't have a fleet to speak of. Um, it will just be the scourge, the UCM, um, the Shatari, and the PHR. And you mentioned this kind of tactic thing. That seems to be what Drop Zone Commander is based on as well. It seems to be very, very dynamic, objective-based games. Was that something you decided right from the start, or was it something that came out during the development of the games? It's pretty much decided from the start. I mean, we all grew up playing war games. You know, we've all enjoyed it. We spent far too many years playing them. 
and you know every game has its, its foibles its good points its bad points and we just took our experiences from the games we've grown up playing and moulded those into a game that we wanted to play and we thought hopefully everyone else will want to play and, and it seems like you know they do which is quite nice so how's the ride been so far because I, I think you said two years ago was it you released yeah yeah, it's been two years, r- r- roughly two years. I mean, the game's been in development for a lot longer than that. Um, Dave spent three years in a room, madly, feverishly creating the rules, sculpting all the models, um, painting them all, and then he brought gradually, as he got towards the end of that three-year development period, he brought on new team members to help him um, do the other parts he couldn't, and gr- because it had grown into a bigger bear moth, and he needed help to run it. And then we launched at Salutes um, in 2012, I want to say now. Um, although we, we weren't actually selling anything there, we didn't sell anything for another six months after that, but we showed off the game at Salute 2012 and it's gone from strength to strength. That's pretty cool. Um, your miniatures are quite frankly amazing, especially the display cabinets you've got here. Um, what have you, what, is there anything special with the manufacturing process? Because I, I mean, designing the game is one thing and you can see it all at the expo, loads of things that are just cardboard pieces, but it's a miniatures game that sets it apart. So. What, the, what kind of things have you had to do for developing and manufacturing the miniatures? Have you taken any innovative approaches or...? Um, well, we, we use a... Um, rather than... Some people use a 3D printing to take from the, um, the CAD, CAD um, design of the, of the model. To take it to the next step, you need to get it manufactured in some sort of... Um, uh, some way. Most people, or some people use 3D printing. We use a refractory method um, to a very high uh, definition, which allows us to get incredible detail on the models. A little bit more expensive, but we feel it's worth it because it gives out the models that you guys can see in the cabinets today. And then from that, it then cast into masters and then submasters and produ- produce into production uh, level quantities. Thank you very much for your time. Quite all right. It's quite. Good luck with the rest of the expert. Thank you. Cheers.